that's being invested in those things that the ESSER funding was intended for, response to and recovery from the pandemic. And so we're investing in instructional support specialists, personal protective equipment, nursing and counseling staff. We recently completed a full renovation of classroom Univent at Highland View, so replacing turnkey Univent units there and other HVAC upgrades across the district. So our total proposed tax levy is $15,336,850 for the turnkey 23 school year. Mill rate, so here a mill rate representing property valuation provided by per, per thousand dollars. So for every thousand of property valuation, how much is being taxed, that would be the mill rate. So here you see the blue columns representing total overall tax levy and then the green line representing that mill rate. We see for the 22-23 school year, we anticipate a mill rate of $9.87. The 22-23 tax levy, so to break that down a little bit further, what I've highlighted is the total school levy. So that would be the amount that the, the school board is responsible for taxing for. So those items in the first section are those that are controlled by the district. So we talked about the general fund operations, the debt fund, 38 and 39, our community service fund, and our facilities work within Fund 41. We would consider the school tax levy is $14,902,791. Then those families that choose to take part in the private school voucher program from Greendale, the, the DPI will give us information on the number of students that participated and the district will add that amount to the total overall school tax levy. And so here you see that estimated amount that we have here of $434,059. And so the total school levy with vouchers are $15,336,850. And so that represents about 91% of what someone sees when they open the tax bill. The, the remaining amount is the allocation for the Village of Greendale, the Tax Incremental Financing District, so the TIF for improvements at the Southridge campus. And so the portion from 2021 was $1,553,520. We anticipate that being very similar for the 22-23 school year. Then again, our information on budget and projected mill rate. So the mill rate would be projected to decrease 3.4%. And so here you see, based on a home of two to 400,000, the related impact of that from mill rate decrease. Budget savings measures, the district continues to work through local, state, and federal contract savings. The district has gone to self-funding health insurance to try to recapture savings in keeping high levels of benefits. And then the district also has a shared technology services contract with the village. And we're very appreciative of that partnership. And we feel like that gives benefit to both the village and the school district. So to recap, total expenditures are expected at 45.1 million, total tax levy projected a 15.3 million, which would be a 1.5% decrease. Mill rate projected decrease from $10.24 to $9.87. And a fund balance of 7.2 million, or 20% of our operational expenses. So I thank the board for all their work that has gone into the development of this budget and their support of the administrative team. Uh, also want to acknowledge Sue Patterson, the executive assistant of the board, for her assistance as well. So thank you. 
And with that, next steps. We are meeting here this evening on October 24th. We plan to present to the board a final budget and propose property tax levy for approval. And then the team will begin the work on the 23-24 budget. And we anticipate on May 15th that we will have a preliminary budget for the board to review and approval of that preliminary budget on June 19th of 2023. If you have further questions regarding the presentation, as we talked about, we appreciate the assistance of external stakeholders, people within the community that give us feedback on what we can do to continue to improve and also understand viewpoints on resource allocation. So I would love to continue the conversation. I'm Kathy Weed Vincent. I'm president of the Greendale School Board. At this time, I, call, I hereby call to order this annual meeting of the Greendale School District. At this time, I ask you to please stand and join me for the national anthem performed by the members of the Greendale High School Choir. Thank you, that was very nice. All right, um, so tonight I'm going to begin with the purpose of our meeting. The state law requires that school districts hold an annual meeting. This meeting provides residents with an opportunity to hear about the operation of the school district, have an advisory vote on the levy, and learn about the future direction of the district. The meeting also provides administration with the opportunity to focus on achievements, needs, and future of the district. There will be some ground rules tonight. Business shall be conducted in agenda order unless a major majority of members agree through a motion to change in the order. In the order. 
questions regarding an agenda item will be taken following that specific report. Persons wishing to do so are asked to use the floor standing microphone in the center aisle. Those approaching the microphone are asked to clearly and slowly state their name and address into the microphone for the record and to limit their comments to only one time and limit their comments to, two, uh, to three minutes. Mrs. Jackie Schweitzer will serve as our timekeeper, and if you wouldn't mind standing for a moment so we can, she's got two signs, a 30 second and a please stop sign. Thank you, Mrs. Schweitzer, for being here tonight. If you will be making or seconding a motion this evening, we ask that you clearly and slowly state your name and address for the record. Tonight, I will um, present our designation of parliamentarian. It is my privilege to introduce attorney Sarah Hanneman, who will serve as our parliamentarian for the annual meeting. So if you kind of wave, thank you for being here. Um, So I'd also like to introduce the administrators at the table and the school board. If you would each wave when I call your name, Superintendent Dr. Kim Amidzik, Director of Business Services, Jonathan Mitchell, School Board Members, Vice President Mary Laurel Grogan, Treasurer Tasha Hughes, Clerk Joe Crepito, Member Rob Kobleska, in our student members, I see one in the audience, uh, Kaya Fuentes and Wesley Gilbert. So thank you for being here tonight too. I'd also like to recognize our village president, Jason Siborowski, um, Greendale Village trustees, Colleen Fechtmeyer and Elaine Unger, as well as Ron Barbian. Uh, I also wanted to mention that we have a former school board member in the audience, Ann Chagall, so thank you for being here and Director for Senator Johnson's office, Paul Truce, is in the back. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Now, next I would like to call up Hyatt Pharmacy staff. Um, we have a commendation we'd like to present. And then so I, um, is Demi Sokol from Hyatt Pharmacy here tonight? Is him in the audience? Okay, so we'll, I'll just go on with the recognition. We would like to recognize Hyatt Pharmacy for partnering with the Greendale School District and the Greendale Health Department to keep students in school and learning. First, the community vaccinations on site at Greendale High School was one of their areas. Staff vaccinations at Greendale High School. There was an on-site testing clin clinic in part uh, partnership with the Department of Health Services and Greendale Health Department. And, and finally, they were supported, uh, supported with testing for one of the two statewide pilots of the Test to Stay program in the fall of 2021 to support keeping students in school as much as possible. The staff is always supportive, flexible, and kind with our parents and families. We are appreciative to have a reliable partner through our challenges, and they have been nimble to navigate the changing landscape and how we respond to communicable diseases in the community. So thank you, and they are not here to receive, but we will make sure they get that award. Next on our agenda tonight is the election of chairperson. At this time, I call for nominations for chairperson for this 2022 annual meeting. Please state your name and address. And are, are there any nominations? I, uh, Brian Bach, residing at 6008 Clover Lane and I nominate Kathy, Kathleen Weed Vincent to serve as chairperson for the 2022 annual meeting. May I have a second? I, Kim Kowalczyk, residing at 6200 Highland Lane, second the nomination for Kathleen Weed Vincent to serve as chairperson. So a nomination has been made and seconded to have Kathleen Weed Vincent serve as chairperson of the 2022 annual meeting. All those in favor of Kathleen Weed Vincent serving as chairperson of the annual meeting, please
please indicate by saying aye, opposed, nay. So aye. 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 And obviously nay if there's any nay. Um, the motion carries on a voice vote. So I thank you for that. So thank you and good evening members of the board, administration, and community. I am honored to have this opportunity to address the Greendale electorate and thank you for the opportunity to chair this meeting, to take care of the business of the district. I submit the agenda for the annual meeting as posted. There were uh, handouts at the door. This meeting and the 2022-23 proposed budget have been duly noticed in accordance with state statute. Every elector of a common school district of Greendale, uh, of which Greendale is one, is, an, is eligible to vote at the annual meeting. If an amendment to a motion is co to come before the electorate from the floor, it will need to be submitted in writing to me as annual meeting chair. The voting procedure by the electorate will be a voice vote. If the vote is close, a show of hands will be counted. As elector, uh, an elector is defined by the state of Wisconsin as a United States citizen age 18 or older and a district resident for 28 consecutive days. Members of the electorate are to be seated in the front section of the auditorium. The back of the auditorium is reserved for individuals who do not, who are not district residents. Ushers will direct you to the appropriate area. These seating arrangements will help with the voting process. So thank you to the staff who served as registrars in the hallway this evening as you entered, um, and also to our technology and auditorium teams for their assistance. For the, those participants who do not attend the budget hearing but do attend the annual meeting, we will continue to register electors at the door until the chair calls for the first vote, at which point registration will close. Next on the agenda is the clerk's report of the previous annual meeting. Good evening. I have read the summary of minutes of the 2021 annual meeting as presented and find them to be an accurate representation of our meeting last year. So are there any comments at this time regarding the clerk's uh, uh, report? And if so, step to the microphone. Okay. The uh, clerk's report is, or I'm sorry, the treasurer's report is next on the agenda. Treasurer Hughes will, will present the treasurer's report. The purpose of the treasurer's report is to update the residents of Greendale on the financial status of the school district. For the year ending June 30th, 2022, the district's main operational fund, Fund 10, had total revenues of $35,101,897.03 and total expenditures of $35,108,780.08. Therefore, the operational fund balance, as not yet audited, was decreased from $7,198,480.32 to $7,191,597.27. The fund balance decrease of 0.01% was due to fully expending the allocated budget for 21-22. This 20% operational fund balance is designated for cash flow purposes during the year to avoid short-term borrowing costs so that costs can be covered from July to January when revenue is minimal. This amount is in compliance with the school board's fund balance policy of maintaining a fund balance of not less than 15% of the next year's operational fund budget. Fund 10 is the primary source of funding the district's operational expenses, such as salaries, benefits, supplies, and school program services. The Greendale School District's short and long-term debt as of June 30th, 2022, consists of the following. $31,845,000 for debt issued with the 2018 construction referendum. 3,045,000 in general obligation bonds to remodel Greendale High School in two, uh, 2009, 1,450,000 for the Wisconsin Retirement System unfunded liability refinancing, 1,155,000 for Act 32 energy pro projects and $386,000 
386,660 for capital leases. Financial highlights for the Greendale School District include the proposed 2223 school property tax levy is estimated at $15,336,850. This is a 1.49% decrease to the levy from 21-22. The final levy is known in late October when the budget is finalized based on the final state equalization aid and enrollment. The total expended all funds budget for 22-23 is projected to be $45,115,523. The district continues with sustainable initiatives for energy reduction and aggressively seeks all possible revenue streams in areas such as facility rentals, federal reimbursements, and using state and national contracts. These practices have resulted in cost savings or revenues to help balance the budget without impacting student achievement. It is important to note that student performance and achievement in the Greendale School District continues to be very strong. The Greendale School District is a district of destination and a highly rated district in the metropolitan Milwaukee area with sound operational practices and a stable financial future. Okay, are there any comments at this time regarding the treasurer's report? And again, if there are, please step to the microphone. If not, I now invite Superintendent Dr. Mizik to the podium to present the superintendent's report. Good evening. My name is Kim Amizik, and I am the superintendent of Greendale Schools. Oh, okay. Purpose of my report this evening is to talk to you about your return on investment. So tonight you're going to be taking action to uh, provide an advisory vote to the Board of Education regarding the property tax levy. And my role is to share with you what value you are getting for that taxpayer dollar. By and large, when I'm out in the community and I'm talking with new families or I'm talking with veteran families and they talk about the reason that they live here in Greendale, I frequently hear we have moved here for the schools. Either they experienced it, they were referred by a friend, or some other means, they made choices about where to purchase a home or where to move based on the schools. And we take that responsibility as a school district very seriously. <clears throat> because we know that schools are the, are the foundation of a strong community and that we have a responsibility to educate students and prepare them for being citizens of our world. In 2021, the uh, community uh, came together and did some work around what is it that we want the next iteration of Greendale Schools to look like? What are our future goals? And we revised both the mission and the vision and developed strategic priorities that were approved by the board in June of 21. And we continue to focus on those. Our mission is the reason we exist as a public school system. And it is all students belong and are empowered to learn, grow and engage as part of a global community. And our vision is our preferred future state. What are we striving to become? And our vision is to cultivate excellence in every student. And I'm gonna speak to what that looks like. So what does excellence mean? If we're cultivating excellence in every student, what does that mean? And by and large, there's a lot of weight given to academic achievement. And I want to report that we remain in the top 10% of schools in the state of Wisconsin when it comes to achievement on standardized test results. Our standardized tests, what's included, how do, what do those measure? And those measure achievement towards academic standards. And as I look at academic standards, what I wanted to do was share with you this evening a couple of standards so you get a sense about what those tests measure. And I'm gonna speak to a couple of standards in grade levels that are important and critical turning points. One area that is uh, reading is an area that's measured and reported, and it is fo a foundational skill that students must have. Third grade is a, a benchmark, a threshold grade level that students need to be able to learn to read so that they can continue to use that skill of reading to continue to learn. And so one example of a standard that's measured on standardized tests is, in third grade, is describe characters in a story, their traits, motivations, or feelings, and explain how their actions contribute to the sequence of events. This is part of understanding key ideas and details in a story. 
There are a number of others around craft and structure and integration of knowledge. Complementing reading standards are a number of language standards and writing standards. And at the third grade, here are two standards under the language category. Use spelling patterns and generalizations, word families, position-based spellings, sp syllable patterns, ending rules, meaningful word parts, et cetera, in wor writing words, and consult reference materials, including beginning dictionaries as needed to check and correct spelling. So as we think about what is measured on those tests, that are reporting those scores at a statewide level and where we're performing in the top 10% of academic achievement, those are some samples of what those measures look like. And I'm gonna share a little bit about the measure of math. Eighth grade math is a second threshold. Um, the achievement in eighth grade math is an indicator of likelihood for college level success. And currently, um, here's a couple samples of eighth grade math standards around expressions and equations. Understand the connections between proportional relationships, lines, and linear equations, and analyze and solve linear equations in pairs of simultaneous linear equations. I'm betting many of you in the audience remember that from your days in algebra, and that is an eighth grade standard that is measured on the assessment. So in order to continue to support that excellence, we need to think about access to those rigorous grade level standards that are being measured when on those standardized tests that determine how are we doing and how are we performing. And our strategic priorities speak to this. So two of the strate strategic priorities around academic excellence are provide every student access to a challenging, balanced and equitable education that sparks curiosity and engagement and prepare K through 12 students with the skills to explore and be ready for the college and or career pathway of their choice. And this one's important. The community was very particular in this, that we're preparing for college and or career pathway of their choice. And so we use a number of other metrics. Those standardized tests are just one factor in making sure students are prepared, college and career ready. Reading and math on grade level, that was the one that I just shared with you. Another indicator of college readiness is 2.8 GPA out of 4.0 and we measure on a 4.0 scale. This means approximately a B minus average. Successful completion of Algebra 2, and we've made some changes to our scope and sequence to ensure that all kids have access to Algebra 2 by 11th grade, so that they have the best chance for successful completion of Algebra 2. And that led to well over 90% of our students completing Algebra 2 by the end of 11th grade. College readiness placement assessments, such as the ACT, and I'll provide that in a minute, and participation and passing score in college level coursework, such as AP. And we have over 90% of our students taking a college level course while still in high school, and that is great preparation for college. And just because they're prepared doesn't mean they have to choose college, but we wanna make sure that students have access to college if that is their choice. And so therefore, because we don't expect them to make that choice by the age of 14, we wanna make sure that they have access to all the resources, standards, and opportunities to choose college if they would like after graduation. So as we look at college indicators, one of those benchmarks was around ACT, performance on the ACT in terms of college readiness. And this is our historical performance. In 2017, state law mandated the ACT for every 11th grader in the state of Wisconsin. And what you see on this chart here, the light green bar represents the average of students tested at the 11th grade on the same date. And so it's referred to as the statewide ACT composite average, but that doesn't mean it's the statewide average. This is Greendale's average on the single statewide test date. And so our average was in 2021, 22.3, so the graduating class of 21 scored 22.3 on average composite. Now, students have an opportunity to retake the ACT and improve their score if they're choosing, if they would like to improve their score for college admissions. And so that dark green bar represents their graduate average composite score. So their last best performance on the ACT and the graduating class of 21 improved their score from an average of 22.3 to an average of 22.4. That doesn't seem like much, but it is a big amount <laughs> uh, in that space. What we know is 
uh, 22, a score of 22 on English, I'm sorry, a score of 22 on reading and a score of 22 on math is college ready. That's the benchmark that if students score 22 or better on the ACT in that space, they are 75% likely to get a B or better in the following college level course. That's what that means. So beyond college readiness indicators, we have a set of career and life readiness indicators. These are researched by um, a redefining ready that is led by a superintendent out of Illinois, and these have been researched to be indicators of success at the next level. Attendance, participation in after school activities, industry certifications, and 25 hours of service to the community. And we take a lot of pride in this community around involvement and engagement in the community. And you'll see a number of those highlights and mission moments, and that is a contributing factor to our students' success beyond uh, high school. So I talked about that vision being cultivating excellence in every student, and that every is every. So the best way that we're gonna continue to move towards excellence is to make sure all kids have access. And that, that all means a student who has just moved to Greendale from Pakistan and is still learning English. That all means a student who has a, a learning disability and needs support to access materials in the classroom. That all means you're the daughter of the superintendent. All kids deserve access to standards mastery. And we read some of those standards to you when I was talking about our achievement. So making sure that kids have access to those standards is critical to our success and critical to our continued growth towards high academic achievement. Access is the key to excellence. And we talked here about, we, we take a look here. There's talk about equality. Everybody gets, gets to have something. But our differences might make it so that I can't reach that top shelf and have access to those books. So in order to do that, I might need a taller stool or I might need more supports or more scaffolding from my teachers. And in so doing, I get access to the top shelf. So that equity equals access. And we've been working over the past three years to level up and ensure that access to the highest level standards in our schools for all of our learners. In May, we were highlighted in the Journal Sentinel by education writer Alan Borzek, who talked about our work around access to honors classes for every student. We piloted in 2020, 21 with global studies. At the high school level, we used to have an honors global studies and a global studies class that were separate and students had to choose to take honors. By combining the classes and teaching the class with all of the honors standards for all students and having students meet, here's your grade level standards and we're going to teach the honors level standards and your performance on that determines whether or not you're um, giving credit for honors on your transcript. That was piloted in 20, 2021 um, with our global studies. Last year, we leveled up another in another content area with curriculum review, and that was around science. Uh, so all of our students, all of our students, take biology as ninth graders, chemistry as sophomores, and physics as juniors. Those are pretty rigorous courses. And all of those courses include honors level standards, instruction in honors level standards. And so the impact of that change that we saw in the, 22, in, the, in the spring of 2020 was an increased participation in AP tests. So by having all students have access to that honors level coursework in global studies at the freshman level, there were a number of students who saw themselves as capable of honors levels coursework. So our students who took honors in the past continued to have access to that honors level content and were successful in honors and moved on because those honors standards were prerequisites for AP courses. And so with more students taking, getting access to those honors standards, more students signed up for AP courses. Now, you're looking at that and the bottom is the percentage of students who were successful or passed the test. And so, gosh, when we had less kids in 2019, 83% passed. And when we had more kids in 22, 70% passed. That seems like you didn't do as well. But if you do the math on that, 83% of 233 is 194 students. 
70 percent of 342 is 239 students so by my calculations 45 more students are in college credit because of access there are other college opportunities beyond ap ap is one way one access path to that rigorous coursework in high school but we have other partnerships that we've developed over the last four years and those are partnerships with our technical colleges at both MATC and WCTC. And they offer seniors an opportunity to begin their technical school training as seniors. And so these are some of the programs that are available, protective services, practical nursing, culinary and baking. We have health sciences, introductory classes. We have uh, IT. We have um, welding classes and a number of other construction and um, print, print graphics. So there are a number of opportunities and we have grown the number of students who are choosing this pathway. So we talked about the fact that students have access to rigorous coursework and therefore they're prepared for college and career. In these cases, they're making choices to go on to technical school and they have access to these opportunities before graduation. We are up to uh, 40 of our seniors are currently taking off-site coursework at MATC or WCTC. And you saw the number on Mr. Mitchell's budget presentation that we have 246 seniors. So that is approximately 18 to 20% of our senior class are taking advantage of the opportunity to study a trade or a skill at the technical college. In addition, we have access to uh, directly into the trades. These are pictures from a program that we began and launched in 2018, which is introduction, an introduction to the skilled trades. It's a week-long event in June that students can take summer school and they spend a half a day at each of the trade unions training. So uh, electrical, plumbing, construction. So we have opportunities for students to not just be prepared, but have access to information and opportunities to help them make a choice about what they want to do with their future. So those are, our two, those are around our two priority areas. I'm gonna jump back real quick so you can remember what those two priority areas are. Access to challenging, balanced, and equitable education that sparks curiosity and engagement, and prepare K-12 students with the skills to explore and be ready for college and or career pathways of our, their choice. The other priority areas that the community identified were around connecting with our family and community. And the priority is to strengthen our relationships with family, with families and community to promote a sense of belonging, mutual respect, and safety for all families, inclusive of all racial or ethnic identities. And to do that by cultivating exceptional and effective staff, provide op appropriate training to support student well-being and staff to meet the student mental health needs. This has been an area that has been developing and growing for quite some time. In 2014, the community, as part of the, 12, the 2012 strategic plan, did some research around what is it that we want our graduates to have? What do we want to cultivate in every graduate? Of course, we want academic excellence, but there are other things that we want to cultivate in our students prior to graduation. And these are the attributes of a Greendale graduate that we want to cultivate. Character is at the center. And this year, that character aligns well with the strategic priorities. And we are adopting a new, we, the board adopted and approved a new curriculum called Character Strong that focuses on the center of the attributes. Again, I want to give you an example of what that means and what that looks like. So I'm going to read a couple of standards that are uh, fourth and fifth grade standards in the area of character education. Learners will be able to, with adult guidance, use organizational skills and strategies to focus attention in order to work toward personal and academic goals. So that is one of the standards that's addressed within the Character Strong curriculum as we are working towards that center, that attribute of a Greendale graduate, which is character at the center. There we go. And I want to share with you some other ways that we are developing those attributes of a Greendale graduate. <laughs> I 
Now you're going to see my notes because I can't see my notes if I'm presenting to you. So um, this is our students at College Park. We talked about that community engagement and being a citizen of the world. This is College Park students running a fundraiser for Cure SMA. They had cut coin wars and it was student led and student directed so that they could support their classmates and make uh, donations in that space. These are third graders in Mrs. Staramsky's class at Canterbury that have taken on the role of wildlife biologists. They have been investing different ways organisms can get their traits they have learned how offspring can inherit traits from their parents and also traits can be influenced by the environment. During the investigations, they observed different organisms such as birds. They've also created creatures based on different combinations of traits from their parents and this helped them see how animals in the same species or siblings have different traits. Throughout all of their learning, they made observations, written scientific explanations and more deepening in their understanding about how organisms get traits. These students are doing a DNA lab in their eighth grade science in which they are seeing how uh, DNA is producing on a gel so that they can match DNA samples. We have a group of students at the high school that participate in Model UN. They were quite successful last year and this is them at one of their Model UN competitions. And of course, some of you may have seen the news that our marching band is going to going back to Macy's in, 2020, in the fall of 23. And that is quite an honor. So we've been working to ensure content strand standards and attributes plus district strategy get us the results that we need. So why is it important that those priorities around mental health and well-being and those uh, priorities around belonging matter? There we go. If we create a culture of belonging and trust in our learning students and our learning communities, then our students and staff will be able to take educational risks together. If we use positive assets based language in which we all take responsibility for all of our students, all staff will believe all students can master grade level standards. If we create professional learning communities to focus on the standards assessment and instructional practices, then our instruction will increase students' literacy standards mastery, and we have some other areas. But that's the foundation. Creating a sense of belonging gives students capacity to take those educational risks to raise the bar and believe that they are capable of achieving those high standards. And so those two strategic priorities do support our efforts towards academic excellence. And we're going to do this by recruiting and retaining high quality staff, including staff representative of our students. In the 21-22 school year to the 22-23 school year, we retain 96% of our staff, which is a very high number of retention. And so we are in a good place that way. We continue, we are fully staffed in our teaching staff, but we continue to need support in our paraprofessional staff and our instructional assistants. We recognize and reward our exceptional staff uh, using the Employee of Merit, which there is a school board policy on, and this is our group of winners of the Employee of Merit Awards from this school year. One is sitting in the audience tonight. <laughs> Uh, finally, the sixth strategic priority around is supporting innovation to remain competitive and a district of choice for families. At the beginning, I told you that families move here for the schools, and they've articulated that for us. And part of the reason that we, the part of the way that we want to continue to attract families to our schools to ensure we have a high participation and engagement in our schools is by being innovative in our programming. In 2018, we launched a program in ASL as a world language. Uh, so we have developed a strong program for our American Sign Language. This year it was approved for college credit at UWM and students taking ASL 2, 3, and 4 have the opportunity to earn college credit. And we are one of three ASL programs in the state and so students may choose to come here. And we offer four language programs. In addition, we've started to build additional partnerships. We want all of our students in Greendale to make choices to come to the public schools and to be a destina destination location for them. 
Currently, we have 90% of the students residing in Greendale attend the public schools, but we understand and appreciate that some families make different choices for their students. Uh, we've been building a partnership with the Field Workshop to support academic enrichment and engagement opportunities. In the spring of, 21, or of 2022, we uh, um, offered two academic enrichment opportunities to every student in Greendale, regardless if they attend Greendale, public, Greendale schools or they attend another school, they had access to these academic enrichment opportunities. And you can see they have some hands-on activities that really extend some of the learning that is out there. This year, we've uh, launched a new opportunity for our students and families who choose to either homeschool their students or send them to virtual school, in which there is a number of um, academic enrichment opportunities that students can register for through the Park and Recreation and uh, have access to uh, a number of academic programs that can support their core curriculum that they are getting through homeschooling or virtual school. And so we're looking forward to report on uh, how that program manifested uh, next year. So um, we continue to make progress on the strategic plan that was adopted in June of 2021, and we will continue to stay focused on these priorities to cultivate excellence in every student in Greendale schools. Thank you. Are there any comments at this time regarding the superintendent's report? And if so, you can step to the mic. We'll turn on your mic again, just a minute. Can you test here? Yep. Oh. <laughs> I have, uh, could we, would the employee of Merit be willing to be introduced with a wave? Go ahead, wave, <laughs> Anna. <laughs> okay, um, and, and seeing no other comments, at this time, um, I am, uh, may I have a motion to approve the tax levy as presented for the 2022 2023 school year. Good evening. I'm Robert Lang, residing at 6084 Thornapple Drive, and I move to approve the tax levy for 2022 2023 as, pre uh, as presented. Thank you. May I have a second? I, Brian Bach residing at 6008 Clover Lane, second the motion to approve the tax levy for the 2022-2023 school year. It has been moved and seconded to approve a tax levy of $8,855,643 for the general fund operations, $5,497,790 for the debt services, $783,417 for community services and $200,000 for capital expansion, the total tax levy being $15,336,850 to support the Greendale School District 2022-23 budget. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries on a voice vote. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve, or the next is for the current school board uh, member salary. May I have a motion to approve the current, or uh, the annual school board member salary of $4,900. Uh, Jason Sabrowski residing at 6030 Doyle Street. I motion to approve the current annual school board member salary of 4900 for the 2022-2023 school year. Thank you. May I have a second? I, Bob Lang, residing at 6084 Thornapple Drive, second the motion to approve the current annual school board member salary of $4,900 for the 2022 2023 school year. Thank you. 
It has been moved and seconded to approve the 2022-23 annual school board member salary at the rate of $4,900. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all of those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The motion carries on a voice vote. Next, we will be authorizing the payment of actual and necessary expenses of a school board member when traveling in the performance of duties. May I have a motion to authorize payment of actual and necessary expenses of a school board member when traveling in the performance of duties? Good evening, uh, Kim Kowalczyk, residing at 6200 Highland Lane. I motion to authorize payment of actual and necessary expenses of a school board member when traveling in the performance of duties. Thank you. May I have a second? Uh, Jason Sabrowski, residing at 6030 Doyle Street, second the motion to authorize payment of actual and necessary expenses of a school board member when traveling in the performance of duties. Thank you. So it has been moved and seconded to authorize payment of actual and necessary expenses of a school board member when traveling in performance of duties. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion carries on a voice vote. Next, we'll discuss the schedule for the next annual meeting. The next annual meeting of the Greendale School District is proposed for Monday, September 18th, 2023. The next annual meeting is scheduled for Monday, September 18th, 2023. Okay, at this time, I'm looking for adjournment. Um, this concludes all of the matters that are to come before the Greendale School electorate at the 2022 annual meeting of the Greendale School District. Thank you for your attendance and thanks to the many district staff and volunteers that helped with this meeting. We will be taking a short 10 minute recess and we will convene in this space at, let's look here, at 7.56 for a regular business meeting. Thank you.